Hello, my name is Armin. I want to talk about various ways you can connect Notch and Resolume and the best practices while doing so. If you plan to use one machine for running both of the softwares, there are some great tools ready for you straight out of the box. Let's take a look to some. Notch supports sending and receiving of NDI and Spout signals. Let's grab one of the samples that are given to us and let's send it via NDI to Resolume. Simulation is ready and loaded. Let's go to Project, Settings, Video in and let's enable Send to NDI. With that done, let's go to Resolume and let's find our NDI sender. What if we want to send camera production from Notch to Resolume? There are a number of video capture cards that works with Notch. Most common one in touring DJ industry would be Magwell USB to HDMI or SDI. Its plug and play approach is reliable and appealing. In fact, any direct show or media foundation enabled capture card would work for your notch. So Aya, Datapath, Magwell being amongst the most popular and used ones. So let's take a video signal, let's apply some effects and let's send it from notch to Resolume via Spout. Let's rig a Magwell capture card feed based effect and send it to Resolume via Spout Sender. Let's start by making sure about our settings. So project, settings, video in, let's enable video, let's use capture HDMI and let's enable spout sender. Now we need an output module. Image 2D will be great for exactly that. Now let's grab a video in source. Video in source is the Magwell feed. So as soon as we plug it to the first input in the bottom of image 2D, we get a Magwell feed. Let's add an effect. For instance, digital block glitch. Now let's go to Resolume and let's try to enable this. So now under the sources, I see that Spout server is sending Notch Builder Spout Sender. As soon as I enable that, I see the feed going through. Important thing to notice is resolution. If I come back to Notch and I make this uh, viewport smaller, that affects the output in Resolume as well. We can lock HD signal. Rendering, output resizing, let's choose scale filter output to window. Okay. Now regardless what scale this window is in, the resolution sticks and stays the same. Now let's talk about more complex setup. For those occasions when basing the show on one laptop GPU is not an option. Well, for those instances, setting up an extra computer would be a way to go. So now we're introducing a new link in the chain, a separate machine to process Notch. We're still using Magwell to pipe video feed to it, but we have options on how do we send it further to Resolume machine. We can use Spout peer-to-peer -peer or NDI network connection, but I choose to use a second Magwell card. Let me walk you through best practices of setting it up. Capture cards are treated as virtual displays, so you have two options how to use them. Whether you should duplicate, as it is now, or you should extend the displays. So by duplicating you are making the direct copy. As you see here, we're sending direct copy to Resolume. But if we choose to go for the extend displays, for instance, all of a sudden we have two screens, it's just one is visible and the other one is virtual. So what we can do in Notch, we can send video feed to the second screen. So if we press F10, this video feed is now being sent to the secondary screen or the virtual screen in this case, and that virtual screen is captured by Resolume. Let's finish up this demo by talking a little bit about the ways you can control your patch in Notch. There are several options. You can choose Artnet, MIDI or OSC. For instance, if I want to drive something with a MIDI signal, all I have to do is grab a MIDI modifier from the node list, find appropriate place to plug it. In this case, I want to drive the speed of the spin of the shape. So I'm going to connect it directly there. I'm going to give it some kind of a scale. In this case, one is quite small, so I'm just going to bump it up to something bigger, like 50. And I'm going to use listen for channel to define what button or what slider should work on my MIDI controller. And as soon as I do that, I have a control of the spin on my MIDI. 
You are not bound to a hardware solution to control your patch. My personal favorite is WebGUI. So I'm gonna grab the same continuous modifier and I'm gonna press on the question mark to expose its speed. I'm gonna set the minimum and maximum value, in this case it's gonna be 0 and 25, and I'm gonna hit expose property. I'm gonna leave it with the name of speed of rotation. So now in project settings, I'm just gonna make sure that WebGUI is enabled. It has a port number of 8910. So if I go to any browser that I have on my computer and type in localhost, double column 8910, I get access to that very parameter inside of the WebGUI. Now, if you have a touch-based screen, this becomes a very nice, small, versatile controller. Thank you for watching this demo. I hope you found some information that is valuable for you, and I hope to see your take on Notch and Resolume being used together.